Good morning. Welcome to worship service this morning. We want to welcome everyone who's here, those who are joining us on several platforms. We have uh, a blessed service this morning, in my opinion. I'll tell you a little more about that in just a second. But we're going to begin as usual. We're going to start with a video. Now, the reason I said this is a blessed service is because I have not one but two baptisms today. And for the first time ever in all my years of ministry, identical twins. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Edie and Ellie to come drag your parents up here along with your godparents and join with me around the font, please. As we assemble, God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth and living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And so now I ask you, do you present Edie and Ellie for baptism? If so, answer, I do. I do. Brittany and Jesse, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have them baptized at this time? If so, answer, we do. We do. Yeah, take a moment to pick up anything you need. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Okay. As you have brought your daughters to the gift of baptism, you have entrusted... And you have been entrusted with these responsibilities. They are to live among God's faithful people. And you will bring them to the word of God and to his holy supper. Teaching them the Lord's prayer, the creed, and the Ten Commandments. Placing in their hands the holy scriptures and nurturing your daughters in faith and prayer. So that Edie and Ellie may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others. In the world God made, and therefore work for justice and peace. Do you undertake these responsibilities? If so, answer, we do. Sponsors, I have this question for you. Do you promise to nurture Eddie, Eddie and Ely, Eddie and Ellie? I'm going to do that again. In the Christian faith, as you are empowered by God's Spirit, and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion of the church, if so, answer, I do. I do. People of God, this question is for you. Do you promise to support these two, Edie and Ellie, 
and pray for them and their new life in Jesus Christ, if so after we do. I now ask you to profess your faith, which is your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, which is the faith in which you baptize. Do you renounce the devil, all the forces that defy God, the powers of the world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw us away from God, if so say, I renounce them. Dear people of God, these questions are also questions for you. I'll ask you to rise and join with me. These questions are the questions of faith. Join with us. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You may be seated. Let us pray. Blessed are you, holy God, for you are the creator. breathe new life on those who are baptized by your spirit adopt us all as your children through jesus christ our lord and savior who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, hi. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you, no, I'm sorry. There's no back here. <laughs> well, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> Edie Drake. I'll ask the congregation to join with me in this response. You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your sons and daughters new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to do new life. Edie and Ellie, may the spirit of the living God the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Well, that's the last time I'll do that, okay? <laughs> okay, now I got one more for you. All right.
also shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify God who is in heaven. Amen. I'll ask the congregation to rise and join with us. Let us welcome Ellie and Edie, who are newly baptized. Join with me. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. We continue now. I'll ask you to remain standing, and we continue with our gathering song. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Let us pray. You are great, O oh God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself. And our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lesson. Psalm 145, verses 8 to 14. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures through all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Reading Zechariah, 
verses 9, 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter. Jerusalem, lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant, victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life, thanks Thanks be to to God. God. I'll ask you to stand and join with me for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn thy fire within us. Speak until our hearts are stirred. Holy Gospel this day is a reading from the book of St. Matthew in the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus has been speaking. He continues in these words. But to what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. And at that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'm going to start this morning with a warning, pastor joke, okay, and it fits, it fits beautifully. I had a colleague share this in an email this past week. He has a number of veterinarian people in the congregation, and no, he doesn't live in Saskatoon, he lives in the other main veterinary training center. I'll let you figure that out, or you can ask me afterwards. Anyway, this man had this practice that was really quite successful in small animals. He said one day, right in the middle of the schedule, round about 11 o'clock, this man comes in, holding his dog in his arms, and he goes, help, help, I need help, right away, right away, it's an emergency. And he said, so what I did was I took the man into the back and I looked over his dog. The dog was dead. He didn't receive this news well, says the vet. And so he said, I want a second opinion. 
And he said, so what I did was I figured I'd give him the most authoritative second opinion in the office. He said, I brought the office cat in. And I put the office cat up by the dog. And the office cat walked up and down and up and down. Turned, stuck its nose in the air and hopped off and wandered away. And the vet said, I told the man, see, even the cat figures your dog is dead. He goes, oh, all right. What do I owe you? And the vet looks at him sweetly and says, that'll be $350. And the man goes, what? How dare you charge me that much money? And he says, oh, it's really quite simple. I was only going to charge you about a $25 visitation fee, but then you asked for a second opinion, and the rest of that fee is for a CAT scan. I warned you. But it's like that, says Jesus, when we come to this first part of the text. It's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me, and you can't make me happy. Notice, I play, I want you to dance. You, you didn't seem to like that, and besides, your dancing's not that good. And, and then we played a different tune, and I expected you to do the usual Middle Eastern thing, wailing and mourning, and you didn't do that. And I don't like that either. And Jesus says, see, it's simple. I and my cousin show up, and we can't win which is exactly the way our lives look some days. You can't win for trying. John comes and he's holding to all the rules. He's keeping all the regulations. He's being a good Jew. If anything, he's pushing the rules harder to keep himself pure. And you don't like that. You say he's filled with a demon. So I come along, and I'm sitting down, and I'm working with the people who need redemption, the people who need healing, the people who need saving, and here's what you give me. Uh-huh, and you're a glutton, you're a drunkard, you eat with sinners, and oh, Lord have mercy, tax collectors who are lower than low. You don't like that either, says Jesus. There is no pleasing these people. And so says God, here's my wisdom. He says what I heard when I was five. My grandfather, the good Presbyterian deacon he was, he uttered these words, and I've never forgotten them since. He said the very young, like these guys, and the very old, like some of us who are well past 80, are very wise. He said, in between, we make a complete mess of it. And later on, I had the chance to ask Grandpa, and he says, well, it's easy. The very young are from God. They have all God's wisdom with them. The very old are close to God because they're getting closer to the other end, and they have wisdom as well because life has beaten them up that far. This is wisdom, says Jesus. I have come, I know God, and I'm giving you God's wisdom. So here's the point, my dear friends. I'm going to use a word that occurs five times in the Bible. Because it really doesn't mean what we think it does. There's three, in the old t three readings in the Old Testament, starting with Proverbs. There's two readings only in the Gospels. This one here, and the one that is in Luke chapter 12. I'll give you a little heads up on that in a sec. The word is easy. Nobody promised me easy. And when I turned into a Christian, I thought this was going to be just a slice. It was going to be a cakewalk. God would bless everything I was doing. It would be swell. I'd have a great wife. I have a great one anyway. Uh, but everything was just going to go hunky-dory. It didn't happen. God says, no, I didn't take you out of life. So, when you look in the Bible and you find easy, it's not. 
Because you see, easy here, says Jesus, is means you're hooked up to me. Easy here means we're working together. Easy here means you come to me for answers. Easy here means that you're asking the blessing of me and God in the Holy Spirit. That's not easy. That's not easy at all. So I'm going to leave you with this thought. When we run into a tough situation where we're confounded, remember what Jesus said about wisdom and ask this question. What would the wisdom of God that is Jesus Christ intend for me to do? Amen. I'll ask you to stand and join with me for our next hymn. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world, inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O God. Mercy mercy is great. great. God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace, guide government leaders at all levels, national, state, province, and local to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, 
and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all who are in need and to the list, Lord, that we name from our hearts of we, those we know to be afflicted in mind, body, and spirit, we add these people. Neil, Charlene, Lawrence, Eleanor, Pam, Tammy, Sam, Rebecca, Viola, Tommy, Tabitha, Sharon, Vanessa, Bob, Nikki, Laverne, Leslie, Wesley, Sarah, Diane, Chris and Riley, Kelsey, Ken, Phil, Rose, Eric, Henry and Violet, Tammy and Tiffany, Sharon, Howie, and Sandy. Extend your renewing and restoring hand to all the people that we have named before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship, a round word and sacrament. Encourage children in their learning and growing, and watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal your love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all contexts we encounter. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all of creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace. How they are cold. Yes, indeed.
And now as you're finding your seats again, I'll remind you that we need to remain standing. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is in the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated for the distribution.
I'll ask you to stand and join with me. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore through Jesus Christ our Lord, Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 And now receive the blessing of the Lord. May our almighty and eternal creator, who is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep all of us this day and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. I have one. You can tell it's summertime. I have one only. Uh, we have two birthdays this week. Sorry, three birthdays this week. We have Samuel Bukambu has a birthday. That's today. And then Kira has a birthday, and Eleanor has a birthday coming up this week. So we need to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. You have something? Okay. If I seem surprised, that's because she didn't warn me about it. Well, I don't normally, but I just want, we sang happy birthday to Martha last week, but I just wanted to say she turned 96, and I think that's a wonderful oh. thing. All right, all right. But now who's counting, right? <laughs> When you, when you get over 90, you go, nah, it's just another number. <laughs> Congratulations. Nancy. Well, I just have one quick reminder, and that is, you'll notice on the whiteboard when you first come in, that it tells <coughs> the events of the week. And during the summer, because our Bible study doesn't run during the summer, we still want you to be reading your Bible for obvious reasons. Um, so the scriptures are there. I would encourage you to take a look at them and sort of get... Uh, familiar with them because actually in the week in the service the following week we actually look at those and sort of it gives you a refresher during the week to get you prepared for it the other thing is that starting in september we're going to be having um, our ladies get together which is once a month last wednesday of the month we get together we have coffee you know and uh, sometimes we eat cake you know i'm just saying um, and uh, we're going to figure out what that programming looks like if you're interested in being part of that in some small way or large way let myself know, or Eleanor. Eleanor, could you just raise your hand for those who don't know? Yes, and uh, we'd love to have you involved, even if you just were like, we need a reminder text, you know, that kind of thing, so that we, we have it fresh in our memory. And then I also wanted to encourage you, if you're looking to get involved in some way, whether it's in serving the elements, or whether it is in decorating, or whether it is in the Sunday school, that kind of thing, we would encourage you to talk to the office because we want you to use, be as involved and connected with your community as possible. We're a family, and so we want uh, all the parts of the family to be involved. All right. Okay, we're good. Any other announcements? If not, stand and join with me for our closing hymn. This little light of mine, oh, I'm gonna let it shine, oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, oh, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, and soon and very soon, we are gonna see the King.
shine oh this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine oh i'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine go in peace share the good news thanks be to god this little light of mine